guys, uh, it looks like it's time to start the stream. I'm just gonna set that up. There's our, there's our friend. Uh, this is Leaf. Cat, no, not catnip. Literally hemp oil for cats. Um, just that is what it is. Uh, so here's Leaf de Grey. I did make a change. I couldn't figure out how to make pock marks in the skin, so I just made a light, light tonal, dark, yeah, slightly darker spots, and just put it around his face and hands. I don't know if it's good. I might have to look at it later. I also think I need to rotate that ear. Looks like it's leaning in too much. But what do you think? Do you think I need a... Do you think that's good? Should I do something else for pockmarks? I don't know. I'm not great at this. I've said it before. Uh, I also wanted to add in the zipper to his outfit. I'll do that later. Primarily around the cheeks. Okay, I'll try and, let's see, this was, I put it under small detail, let's first get rid of it in the hands then, oh, why is it past 50? Oh, I remember why, okay, let's get rid of that, get rid of some of the other ones then. I like that one there. Um, is that better? Should I leave that one over above his eyebrow? Ah. I don't know. Park marks are weird. Luckily, the, this next character has a smoother skin. Let's get into the other character on that note. Um, so the other character, like I mentioned, has... I feel like there's an implied story here. Post a pic in the Discord somewhere. Yeah, uh, probably under art would be the best place to post anything. Although, let's see. Um, art, my talk myself. If it's promotional, then self promo, obviously. But, uh, no, I, I'd say art, probably. Go on ahead. Uh, born Boulder Down. 59 year old male Weaver. And I added this, the second job of groundskeeper because I felt like it was really fitting. Long curled auburn hair, by the way, uh, the four colors up here, this, uh, uh, first of all, let me turn that off. Go on over to sketch. This is my color palette for the day. Uh, this is auburn, I had to look it up. To show you pocked marks. Um, then maybe send that to me directly. Uh, or. Hmm. Yeah, I think the, that would be, be best of direct. Unless you want, I could add a reference channel. Let me know if I should add a reference channel. I won't do that for now. For now, just DM me it. Uh, he has the same description for skin tone as Leaf, so, you know, literally the same skin tone. Also, does Scrubs have green eyes? Maybe they're related? I don't know. And on the account of the fact that he worships the goddess of air, movement, and speed, uh, I gave Leaf a purple scarf and purple jewelry because he worshiped the goddess of magic, and I feel like this light blue is very fitting for a goddess of air, movement, and speed. Um, let's see, shaved, his hair is shaved on one side. Uh, I think he's shorter than Leaf. Leaf is six foot, he's four foot eight. Shorter, average build. Again, an oval, ovular head, bland face, and missing his right leg. Um, which I think 
really, when you consider the fact that he, he worships a goddess of movement and speed, that's, that's kind of where that sad story begins. Uh, straight to the point, judges people by their actions, not their words. That's a huge personality thing. Again, I think it's really fitting. Um, owns a box full of dead animals. That's part of why I just had to, be, to make him a groundskeeper. I didn't think that was very fitting for a weaver. And stretches the truth to tell a good story. To me, this is a man who used to be a military guy. He, or maybe like just like a guard. Uh, let me turn off Leaf for now. He, it, it seems clear to me that he's been through hard times, but he still has, like, he still values life but he's a much more um, somber person because of his uh, life experience. Um, like, uh, if Hagrid was not a giant person and not as fun or goofy of a character, much more serious, maybe a little bit less obsessive, I think that would get you something close to Boren Boulderdown. So why is this all messy? Uh, let's get into that. So I was having difficulty figuring out what I wanted to do with the arms. I think I want a leg, the, his amputated leg to just be here. His other leg, I'm gonna have it go up and then down with his arm resting on the knee. Uh, his other arm, I'm thinking, might be just resting on his box. I'm gonna have difficulty figuring out how to get that to look good. Maybe something more like that. Uh, let's see. That doesn't look too bad for a start. This is gonna be the box of dead animals. Post-war Hagrid if he was a dwarf. Maybe, um, actually, yeah, how tall did it say he was? Four foot eight? Yeah, this is Dwarven post-war Hagrid. Thank you, I'm so glad you're here. That's, that's the perfect description. Uh, I see you sent me the thing. Yeah, see, like, it's so subtle. How do you get that subtle look for a pockmark? Ah. The second thing you sent... That looks great. It, I, I guess I need more variety in size. That's that's what it ultimately comes down to. Before we continue then, I think I actually... Okay. Whoop, that's not what I wanted. Uh, let's return to Leaf for a second. under small details again. Let's just erase what I have currently for pockmarks. We're just gonna... Oh. That's too dark. Let's bring down the opacity to 20. Just get a few large chunks in here. That might be a little too big, but we'll see. Smaller brush.
a smaller brush again. Let's bring it down to a five. is acting up a little bit. And I think that one over there is a little bit big. Too big. Might break it up into two. Uh, yeah. Eraser. Something like that. Or maybe... Maybe even more subtle. Yeah, let's just make that really, really light. Something like that, maybe? How is that for pockmarks? so helpful uh, okay I'm pretty confident now with my leaf we can now just drop that and return to our boring sketch not boring sketch boring eh, you get the idea mm -hmm. anyway so with that in mind let's um Grab the skin color, make it a bit darker, and that'll be our first uh, thing. Size of my brush, I need to bring it down to 10. Opacity is at 100. And we're just gonna start working on getting a good head shape. I just like to remind everyone that I am using a mouse and keyboard, which I'm not going to be at doing as well as some professional artists you might see on YouTube. Mostly because I'm not a professional artist, but also because uh, I am at a little bit of a disadvantage with the fact that I don't, I don't have professional artist tools at my disposal. Nor do I really intend on getting professional artist tools, since that's not really the point of the channel. This is more of just something fun to do than it is a, hey, let, let's have this be a new channel identity. It's not that. Um... That said, I do want to try and do well. I'm not gonna try and, I'm not gonna half-ass this. If my mouse will obey me, that would be particularly nice. Okay. Uh, okay. Position ideas, close that out, okay. That's a decent enough starting head shape, I think. Um, so just gonna, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Keep forgetting, what is the art program called? It's called Krita, K-R-I-T-A. I found it to be a pretty good alternative to Photoshop. Of one thing, it's free. So, you know, think of that what you will. Uh, outfit. Let's actually borrow from Leaf again. I'm just gonna steal that. And make it 
darker. If it lets me. Okay. We're gonna. Here we go. Turn that back off. This will be a different layer. And it'll just kind of be the same thing. I think as what Leaf is wearing, just, well, no, I think it's gonna be like a shirt and pants. Maybe even like a shorter, maybe even like a vest. I don't know, I really like the idea of a vest for some reason. So let's get even darker color up here. We're just gonna go over that. Have you ever considered pixel art? I have. It's something I've done a little bit of. It's a lot of fun, but um, I have a hard time with figuring out what details are not necessary. And the smaller I go, the more apparent that becomes. So, I guess what it ultimately comes down to is I got to, I need to do, it, do more things like pixel art so that I can get used to not needing too much color. But it's, it's hard to get out of your comfort zone like that. that back up and we'll go back to our previous uh, layer. Actually, it's the wrong one. I want this color. Okay. For the shirt that is underneath, she's just gonna kind of go like this. This is gonna, we're gonna be spending a lot of time cleaning this up, I can already tell, but that's fine. Does it need to be perfect? Let's see what this looks like so far. Uh, I do need to act. Yeah, it might be a good place to start with for this kind of thing, actually. So I probably should. We're now just gonna Go here. Ah, that won't be enough. I'm just gonna kind of get the idea of there being a hand here. Do I have a steam? Uh, I do have Steam. That's actually where I, where, when I play games on this channel, most of them are being played through Steam. Uh, there are exceptions, like during my Nuzlocke series, which reminds me, uh, the video coming out two weeks from now is going to be a Nuzlocke video. Um... Uh... I haven't had a Nuzlocke video in a while. Wait, can I get this to be straight? No, but I can ruin the size of my thing. Wonderful. Oh yeah, I'd have to use the line tool. I think now's a good time to cheat a little bit. Let's cheat. to use this line tool to get this to be perfect. And it'd look better, I think, if it was more like this. There we go. We'll have to come later. Mm -hmm. 
It's a very thin box, I think. Um, let's see, what, what do I want to say about it? Uh, I haven't been doing the Nuzlocke because I wanted to catch up to it with my videos. And I only do videos, basically, right now my video schedule is once a month. Um, I don't intend for that to always be the case. I do want to have more videos. But before I can do more videos, I have to have a few things already set up. a box, I think. I'm gonna get a slightly lighter tone, and uh, we're gonna have this be the... It's gonna be like a standard wooden box with metal things holding it together. Uh, and yeah. I think I mentioned this during the pre-stream. Uh, I'm gonna say it again here. Uh, I was thinking about starting to play a game called Magic the Gathering on uh, stream or video. It's a card game that I had played a while ago. Wait, was this that layer? Or that? What layer is this? Oh, I see what happened. Okay. Fixed that. Also, I want it to be a bit bigger than that. Uh, I had this in my mind because the other day I went to a game shop, a local game shop that I like very much, and saw uh, some magic cards, and I wanted to add them to my magic decks, which I haven't actually used in a while. Uh, mostly because when I was playing it before, I stopped playing it because Everyone I knew who played Magic the Gathering wanted to play a format that I was not all that interested in. That format called, being called uh, Commander. It just wasn't my cup of tea. So, yeah, but I don't have to play Commander if I'm a person who's in charge of what kind of format we're using, such as if it's on my own channel. And I think that that is a good enough reason to get back into it. I would obviously look for some people to play with me, uh, and I would be using something called Tabletop Simulator, which is a game on Steam I haven't used in a while, uh, but I remember it being good. Uh, I see what's going on here. Is this the right one? That is the right one. I would have to make my decks in Tabletop Simulator, but that's not too difficult. I already have uh, all the Magic the Gathering cards downloaded as assets. So it would mostly just be a matter of time. Something I tried to do before because there is another group of friends I have that had invited me to do just that. Uh, I didn't make my deck in time before I had lost interest, unfortunately. But, uh, whatever. That's just sometimes how things go. Let's change the color again. 
going to go for a bluish gray for to indicate steel. Or not steel, but metal. Hey, Floof. Um, welcome. Uh, I see you're probably leaving soon, but I'm glad you were able to make it. It's gonna be a pretty standard kind of thing. It's not gonna be any. It's not gonna be fancy. It doesn't need to be fancy. I feel like this is the kind of guy where he doesn't do anything extravagant without needing extravagance. You know? Down to earth. The reason why I think he's a groundskeeper and I and tying that into the box of dead animals is it he probably has it to feed animals that are around the premise. Uh like someone doesn't just have a box of dead animals for no reason. It's too specific, I think. Too particular of a detail to just be thrown in randomly. You know, it's like, if that's your dating profile, I like, I like, uh, long walks on the beach and I carry a box of dead animals. There's, you don't just throw that in there, you know? Ah. Uh. up the size of brush to 15 maybe and we'll have that be the uh, nails space them out like this that's probably not even but it wouldn't be this is a box made from older technology it w so, you know, medieval grade technology w usually wasn't all that precise. I would need it to be more ovular if I wanted to get the side one, so I'll worry about that later. Um, let's clean up a bit. It's like a nice reveal. Look how clean this box is. I think I did a pretty good job with that, actually. In fact, if I can just figure out... Yeah, look at that. It's a nice box. I would use this box. So what happened to my thing? Uh, if, if he was a weaver, I would have thought he did taxidermy. Right? He probably does, but that's more like a hobby. Now that I say that, it doesn't make much sense. I don't know, no, I mean like, that can make sense. Uh, what are you drawing? Ooh, it looks nice. I'm drawing a Boren Boulder thing. Uh, he is a 59-year-old male weaver and groundskeeper. 
He's the, uh, he's gonna be the second NPC I, uh, out of the three randomly generated that I am drawing. The first having been Leaf. I can show Leaf off real quick. There he is. My boy. And Boren, I don't know if, like, he's related or not. He doesn't share a last name. But, you know, that maybe he married. Who knows? Anyways. Yeah. Let's, uh... Let's see. Let's get back to... Clothing. I'll have to... I should be naming these layers. Let's see. Box. Detail. Box. Outline. Orange skin. Outline. Eventually I'll merge the outline layers into one. But for now, I want to keep them separate, so it's easy when doing certain things. Orange shirt outline. And this will be the vest. Oops, that's the wrong button. Orange vest outline. There we go. I want to avoid use, relying too heavily on that straight line tool um, because I think that leaning too heavily on that as a crutch is just going to result in me not getting better as an artist, which kind of is a goal here, uh, but you know, I will just do what I have to if I have to. to figure out what I'm doing with this arm. So I know I want it to go down here onto a onto his leg. I think I need to actually have it going out more. And then coming down like that. Portion and stuff like that later. Here I'm just gotta just gotta get the rough idea down. That's kind of the I, that's kind of the point of this part of the process. Art is a process, you know. You can't expect to be there. From the, from the get-go. That's something I need to remind myself. Because I like to... I like to think... That... When I do something, it should be perfect on the first... Like... From the sketch, I feel like it should be perfect. That is not the case. That's a part of how I think that I really need to work on. But it can be hard. Uh, where's my sketch layer? Oh, that is. Oh, 
this is the layer I'm just looking for, composition. Kind of down to here. Okay, let's clean out that. Yeah, that arm's gonna need to be fixed later. But for where I'm at, not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. To be honest. Hmm. Let's figure out pants. I feel like they're gonna be a slightly darker color than a shirt, but not that much darker. Really understand it needing to feel perfect from the get-go. Struggle with that as well. Yeah, I think that a lot of people struggle with it. How it counts, which is the vision and the perspective. If you think, I think if you explore your souls and experiment, you'll improve the process. Yeah, that's that's what it really comes down to. I need to experiment more. I, t I mentioned this earlier. I need to stop leaning so heavily on um, the things I'm more comfortable with. Have like a rope that ties this closed. So actually, thinking about it, this should have been a different layer. We'll put it down make this look not trash. Oops. Mouse is being a little rough with me. Let's do a simple fake knot there. Eh. So how this do that. So it goes all the way down to the ground and then just That'll do for rope. Let's go back to pants. Although, might even make this another layer. Pants, pants line. Okay. Let's get this not all messed up. I think I need to clean the layers again in order to better 
let's see how this looks. Hey, right, not bad. I think I need to edit this pant leg a bit more, change its angle. But other than that, I think that that's really good. Here. Now, let's just erase it from here. I think it needs to not go up as high, for one thing. I think it just needs to go to like, here. Leg's probably gonna start from like here. Uh, okay, so at this length, it looks like it might have been cut from above the knee, which I have heard is not ideal. And it just makes me think again about like this seems like a character who might have been through a lot. Uh, that's not what I want to do back too far. I actually want to raise more closer to here. I want to make it this thicker by, a, by, a, by an amount. Not that. Let's try it like that. A little bit. Something more like that. Something like that, I think. I probably don't need this part of the sketch, right? I can just do that. I get it. There's gonna be a hand there. The vest is gonna go down. Um. Oh yeah. <laughs> I have my list of things to talk about, and I haven't even really spoken about most of them. So I think now is a good time to bring that back up. One of the big things I wanted to talk about was actually Pokemon, and the problem I have with Legendaries. Uh, I was doing a thing the other day, which, there's this site where the idea is that it helps you better understand for your, yourself in terms of what Pokemon you like. And it occurred, in doing it, I re, uh, I noticed that the legendaries all ranked real, a lot lower than what you would assume. And I think that that's, I think there's a reason for that. And I think that a lot of people, when they're honest with themselves, will find that they feel similarly. And I believe Again, this is all just me uh, trying to uh, explain away a phenomenon that I notice with myself. I can't really speak for the rest of humanity, but it seemed to me like I think that legendary Pokemon innately uh, just, they're really cool, but they fail to accomplish the primary goal of what it, of what being a Pokemon is supposed to do. Um, because no matter how cool they are, they're never gonna, it's never gonna end up being among my favorite. It's always going to be below, like, the top 50 or top 100. Uh, Pokemon
Pokemon at their core are supposed to be um, okay so here's why I think it's counter that legendaries are counterintuitive for what Pokemon is actually supposed to be Pokemon at their core are supposed to be um, generic creatures that could be anyone's friend if you find one it can be your friend that's that's kind of like it and the generic element is actually important because it's not the Pokemon the Pokemon isn't special because of what it is it's special because of the bond you make with it because it's you're on a Pokemon adventure you're on the Pokemon journey a legendary innately is a powerful unique being and yeah that you can have be you can be friends with a powerful being but it's kind of like saying you're friends with the president of the United States it doesn't matter if it's true it it's off-putting and um, so legendary Pokemon need to be judged separately. They're not, they can't be judged as Pokemon. They have to be judged as their own category, I think. Um, let me look at look here. Right, even if you have a legendary Pokemon where the idea behind its appearance was that it's the legendary Pokemon of friendship there is still this implication that it is a, a great powerful being with control over a, how a lot of people think you can't it, it, it doesn't fit with that generic hey this could be anyone's friend kind of vibe The only legendary I honestly like is Mew. I like a lot of legendaries. I think Mew is definitely a top tier legendary. In terms of favorite Pokemon, like I said, top 50, top 100 at best. But in terms of legendaries, it's gotta be like, I don't know, top 10 maybe? Pokemon are like companions, but legendaries are like natural forces being friends with a tornado is difficult or weird at best. Exactly. So, they're cool, and I'm glad we have them. But, you know, they just will never be that thing that I think a lot of people want them to be. Or maybe a lot of people don't want them to be that. But, you know... Something I noticed, and I wanted to comment on. So I did. Hmm. This pant leg's giving me difficult. Probably because it's just so close to the edge. I think this needs to be more like that. I'd also just like to take a moment to comment on the fact that legs are weird, like really weird. Why are they like this? Eh, oh well. Unless that didn't need to go up as high. I think it needs to go more like here. And I think that'll fix the problem I'm having with this part of the leg. To the shirt outline. It's right around here. It honestly needs to switch out to like that. It 
erase back to the shirt outline. There. Got to do a little bit of a cleanup over here. I don't know what I'm going to do for feet. I kind of wanted to be wearing... I don't know. I'll have to look again at the inspiration I pulled for Leaf to see what kind of clothing they wear. But, um... Yeah. Oops. So I think I need to find that out. Not that much. gonna clean this up again perfect I'm gonna merge that. okay and let's fix up his vest again going down to there I'm kind of still technically in a sketch phase. Uh, these are not necessarily the, the final proportions. But, uh, whatever. I think it's looking good right now. Let's uh, go ahead and go back to cleaning up. What the? Why is that like that? Oh, I see what happened. That went too far. It should not be like that. There we go. I pressed a the wrong button again. Composition. Sketch. And I don't know what I'm going to do for the shoe. Or foot. Uh, legendary be considered endangered species. Well, maybe. Um, it depends on how you're interpreting Pokemon. Uh, either they're actual legendary beings, not legendary, uh, le the literal, like, mythical beings with power and control, which is how I interpret it, or they're really rare wild animals that have had stories attributed to them, much like real life, which, definitely a valid way of looking at that, uh, I think that's a fun interpretation. Not the way I, I'd re I prefer it being like, they are, I, it's not often that I like something as it, as it is presented at face value, that, but Pokemon legendaries are one of those instances. At face value, they are powerful beings. And yeah, I just think that that's what, how I like to think of them. Uh, I don't want to get into detailing yet. Let's... Oh, ah, I zoomed out a little bit too much. It's getting a little bit laggy, actually, which is a little odd. Let's get into some very simple shading. I'm gonna go down to here. Skin color. Like elves, long lid, very powerful, but low fertility rates. Yeah, like, if that's how you're interpreting the legendaries, then that, that's what it is. If, if they're not, like, mythical beings, then that's exactly what they would be. Um, yeah. Um, so, that's that. Again, I'm not working on detailing yet, just kind of trying to bubble in color. So it's even fine if I'm not sticking to, the, to my outline here, because that's not really the point. 
Uh, other than the face, I think that, that, I'm done with that. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying too hard to stick to that. I can erase it afterwards, it doesn't matter. Just get it filled. I'm gonna even increase the size of the brush. Just gotta fill this in. That's the thing I gotta keep in mind. There we go. Because unlike traditional art, it's very easy to clean. Well, not easy, but it's a lot. Yeah, it's very easy to just clean up mistakes like that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Now, actually, let's get over to here. We're just gonna. trying to keep all my layers uh, very well labeled so I don't lose sight of what things are yeah I just yeah. no that's a weird thing Okay. Ah, uh, dang it. Let's put... Skin outline skin color above pants. There we go. That way I don't need to be... Wait, it's still like that? Oh, I see what happened. There we go. There we go. Now I can just do this without thinking about it too much. Uh, yeah. There's that. Box detail, pants, color. We also need to clean up that. hard to control my mouse sometimes. Let's drop that size down and clean up at this corner. I honestly shouldn't be cleaning up even this much because again I'm just going to be changing a lot of this. But I like seeing it clean. So whatever. Maybe now would be a good time to... Wait. Oh, I see. Let me quickly cross out the things I've talked about. Problem with legendary Pokemon. And our cool. We have moment faves. Counterintuitive. What Pokemon is supposed to be? Generic creature. Friendly. Powerful being. Pokemon should be... Legendary should be judged separately. Legendary of friendship. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Video in two weeks is the Nuzlocke video. Game store made me think about Magic the Gathering and whether or not I should put that on the channel using Tabletop Simulator. Okay, that just leaves the other topic of conversation I wanted to bring up for the day of the nature of good and evil. Um, first of all, the most common one that, uh, kind of school of thought that I know of for whether or not or how we judge good and evil is the argument of results versus intent. Uh, I think it's a little bit silly, to be honest. Um, and I'll explain why in a, just, a, just a minute. Once I've figured out what I'm trying to do here. Sure, not mind. There it is. I want, to, I want to clean this up. That's bothering me. There we go. Honestly, rope should be next. I need to get a lighter color. Maybe not that light, okay. Rope, 
color. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, my argument of... My... Let me phrase that. My counter-argument for the results mentality is if someone intends to do someone else harm and they fail, they still... It's, it's not like they're satisfied with the result. They intended to do someone else harm. That is bad. Whether or not it had a good outcome, I guess is how I should word this. You still wanted something to ha You wanted things to go one way and it went a different way. That's not good. That's failure to be bad. Um, so there's a new version. I assume you're talking about Magic the Gathering. Yeah, but I don't want to have to collect every card, so I'm just using Tabletop Simulator. That way I can just have all the cards and not need to collect them. Um, so yeah. The, my argument against uh, intent-based morality is that if you want to do good, usually if you're trying to do good but the results are bad, it's born from ignorance. You made a decision based off of misinformation. And if you are always trying to do good, but you are choosing not to become less ignorant, you're staying in this place of not knowing any better. Like, you know your ignorance is, is hurting people around you, but you're choosing not to do anything about it, even though you want good things to happen. You're not bad, you're not a bad person for that by any means. But you're, I don't think, I think that the idea of good should be held to a higher standard than just, I meant to do better. Um, color, there we go. So, yeah, here's, here's what my thought on good versus evil. I think evil should be judged based off of intent. Whether or not you intend... Whether or not your actions result in... Uh, goodness. The fact that you wanted things to be... You wanted to cause harm to others. That's my example for evil here. That shows that you are a bad person. Uh... I wish I was on stream with you because the topic is too much to just type out what I have to drive home. I, I get it. Maybe next time. I could maybe uh next time we're playing together we can bring this up again. However, uh okay, so that's what I think about evil. However, good should be dis I believe should be defined by the desire to be better. And when I say better, I don't mean like faster, harder, stronger that kind of thing where you're just a you're just a bigger person or figures out the right word but like you're not just a better at doing something I mean better as in you want to um, improve your sense of compassion your sense of understanding uh, and your awareness of how to be compassionate and understanding that's what I think good is. So, you don't necessarily have to make the world a better place, but you have, at the very least, you have to be willing to acknowledge the difficulty that people are facing and know that 
where they're coming from. You know? that up. Um, yeah. That kind of leads me to the question of myself. Am I a good person? Or let's just do this first. I once saw a neat concept of finding evil and good from a story I read where evil is described as freedom, the freedom to do whatever you wanted selfishly. Good was defined by lawful in the story. Yeah, I see that as the law and chaos thing. To kind of like... This is this is what's used in D&D. &D. Good, evil, lawful, and chaotic. It's a... Uh, kind of like a three-part pennant square? Pennant square? I don't know. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Um, but yeah. I think that that's a very valid... Good evil is that there are infinite shades of gray in between, not just a point of reference. I agree completely. I think everything is measured on a gradient. But you can say which direction you're leaning more heavily. Most people probably fall somewhere in the, in the middle. They don't often intend to do other people harm. I think that's ge just generally true. That desire is thankfully not that common. But, um, what's that? Let me bring this up again. That's stupid. But, uh, at the same time, I think that a lot of people become very content with themselves and they don't want to be better because they think I'm already a good person. And I just think that's the wrong way of looking at it. Which is why I define it as the desire to be better. It's not being, con even if you've already achieved maximum goodness, thinking that you don't need to improve or you don't need to continue trying because the world is ever changing what context you might have for understanding uh isn't always going to be relevant eventually that will change and when it does you need to be able to say i am no longer able to understand uh things as well as I did before and I need to work t to get the context I need to have that understanding it doesn't mean you have to live through every hardship either it's just compassion defined by the culture I mean the number of parasite species on earth outnumber non-parasitic species by 41 are those animals destined to be evil well, I guess, again, that, dep that depends on uh, sentience. I think that good and evil, another prerequisite for being either, is the ability to know, the ability to define for yourself what the difference is. Whether or not your definition is accurate, you need to be able to think of some way of defining them. I don't know that parasitic species have a have the capacity to understand that they're doing harm. And as such, I don't know if they can be evil. So, uh, yes, I do think you have to be sentient or sapient to be an evil being. Back to the question of am I a good person? Obviously, I don't think I'm evil. I far from think I meet the criteria uh, criteria that I set for myself for being good. However, I also think that that's not. I don't think that's bad. I think that's okay. Because the point of goodness isn't to be good. The point of goodness is just to. The po we. Sh 
So let me rephrase this. The point is not that we should be good people, but that we strive to improve ourselves and have value in goodness. To want goodness out of ourselves and to want goodness out of others. That's how I think of it. Uh, what layer is this? I forgot to name a layer. Oh crap, I accidentally put uh, a lot of the shirt layer underneath the skin layer. Oh well. Shirt. That's that. Da 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 da. <laughs> uh, this should probably be up. Not that high. What about those who are after capital gain as their intent is neither to hurt or to help, it is specifically just to get money? Those who made leaded lead gas were not worried about the fact that their products would harm others, but their goal wasn't to harm people, it was to gain money. See, now that, that's the thing I'm talking about, is that. They didn't want to hurt people. In fact, initially, adding lead was to help people. The problem is that they chose to ignore the facts in front of them for that gain. I don't think they were evil. Far from it. I just think that they were ignorant and selfish. They were definitely not good people by any means. But evil... I, I could never call them evil. Not with good conscience. Because everyone has been selfish at some point, myself included. Does that mean everyone has been evil? Selfishness isn't evil. Selfishness is just looking out for oneself. And that's fine. Sometimes you need to do that. Everyone needs to be able to recognize when they need to uh, take care of themselves and have their needs over someone else's. Because no one... No, everyone needs help. But that help has to first come from themselves. If you can't help yourself, then how can you help the rest of the world? You have to come first. Selfishness has to be the base, like the, fun the fundamental thing to go after. We have good intentions, or should we reevaluate sin as a whole also? Perhaps. Uh, I think sin is a outdated concept. Like, if we look at what the sins actually are, uh, not just expect goodness because yeah you shouldn't expect goodness of others well I mean kind of expect it but that's not it that's not the point the point isn't other people have to be good and there's something wrong with them if they're not so much as it is just don't think that people you're entitled to a thing because you don't know their story you have to have compassion you have to understand where they're coming from and back to sin, if we look at what the actual sins are, there's gluttony, which is eating... Uh, when you... A reductionist look at what gluttony is, is it's just eating when you don't need to eat. Um... I mean, that's... I think that's kind of a dumb... Dumb for a sin. I think a better way of looking at it would be to see people who are hungry and then ignore the fact that it, it's like to judge people for not having food you know what I mean don't think why are they hungry don't they do why don't they just XYZ it, it goes back to compassion for me uh, where is this layer I'm looking for oh wait there it is eh Um, yeah. And after 
gluttony, there's pride. Well, why shouldn't we have pride in ourselves? I think that it becomes, quote unquote, a sin when it's less about pride and more about superiority. When you think you are better than others for no reason other than just you're better. You know, um, I don't know if I'm using the best words to describe my thoughts here, but I'm hope I hope that I'm conveying the ideas well enough. Um, but yeah, it's important to take pride in what you do. Because if you don't, then, well, you're not going to try very hard to do it very well. And I think that the that goes back to the pursuit of improving oneself. If you're going to do something, you should probably do it well. You, sh you shouldn't half-ass things. That's all the down here. That way I can just do that, not worry about it as much. There's that. And there's that. Yes, I would say they are very selfish, considering it led to the deaths of millions of people. They not only ignored, but lied to the public. Yeah. I, I still don't think they are evil, but they are... On that gradient of good to evil, they probably lean further away from good. They lean closer towards evil, but not enough that I would call them evil. I think gluttony is more the idea of self-evil inflicted upon one's self, the indulgence of unneeded resource. That's greed, I would say. It's not really about other people, it shouldn't matter if someone else is starving, that's nature. Well, yeah, but it goes back to compassion. You don't have to give all of your food to the starving, but you have to feel compassionate for them. Um, why are they hungry is a different sin probably related to pride. Pride, I think, is, I don't know, it's like, uh, how are we defining pride here? Because to me, pride is just appreciation of oneself. It's when you acknowledge yourself as having done something well. Maybe I just have a poor... A definition maybe I need to update my definition but as it stands that seems to be what pride is it's just I'm doing something uh, I'm great I'm amazing and I don't think there's anything wrong with believing yourself to be amazing This one, isn't it? Best color. There we go. That looks a little bit better. I need to clean up this shoulder, though. But a lack of compassion shouldn't be evil. Being compassion is good. A lack of good isn't evil. Yeah, excessive pride. Yeah, I agree. But I think that it goes 
it becomes evil when you don't even want to have compassion. When you abandon the idea altogether in favor of just... When you ignore the plight of others and take the, take the uh, road of, it's not, it's not my problem, why should I even think about it? At that point, I think it becomes evil. You should at the very least desire compassion. And not desire receiving compassion, but desire giving compassion. And I also don't think evil is something that comes naturally. In many ways, evil itself might be something that only exists in mentally, in mental health. I'm not wording that great, but it might be something that only exists in people who are not of mental faculties. Because evil is a very specific thing. I'm of course not saying that everyone with um, mental health problems are evil. I'm saying it's more of the opposite. Everyone who is evil, truly evil, probably has a mental problem there that's preventing them from being good. But yeah, uh, I will talk more about this later. I believe that the sins have mo more that one way to look at them. It's all about context. That's probably true. Have a good, have a good one. The concept of good is also against nature. Many concepts we call evil are things that nature approves of. True. That is very true. Um, to a point, to a degree. But I don't think it's in that's entirely accurate thinking about it. I think that, um, we find it, I keep losing players. I think that things, some of the things that we consider good, like the three things I'm about here of compassion, understanding, and awareness, uh, at a certain st uh, state of evolution becomes beneficial for survival. It's why humanity is as high up as it is our ability to band together and understand one another and support one another i think is really what led to us being so advanced i want to fix this elbow it's a little too pointy Although that's the wrong layer to do that on. There. Uh, what were the other prize? I wanted to go through all of them, but I'm kind of blanking on them. Uh, pride, grudge, wrath. Everyone can get angry. There's nothing wrong with being angry. It be only becomes a problem when you let that anger lash out and hurt others. Which is another example of how it's about... that. That's where, that's where awareness comes in, I think. You don't have to never be angry or wrathful. You just have to be able to control your anger so that you're not hurting others. Awareness of yourself and the people around you. I want to do these now. We're just gonna go down here, below box detail, we'll have. Oh, the 
box color. Um. Yeah, where was I? Uh, so that was Wrath. Envy. Yeah, Wrath is kind of simple sin. There's not a lot of philosophical ways to misinterpret it. Yeah. But at the same time, I do think it is misinterpreted because, uh, especially by those philosophers who do have the opinion that you can't indulge in emotion. Uh, there's a philosophy that I'm, I don't entirely disagree with, but it's called, um, oh crap, what is it called? It's the, it's, is it altruism? That I don't, that doesn't sound right, but that might be it. But it's the idea of avoid all emotion, because that's the only way to avoid negative emotion. That just seems like you're... That seems like taking the easy way out, almost. You know, it's it's like a, just abandon, abandon a large part of what makes you human, and then you don't have to deal with the downsides of being human. Although, I don't want to sound like I'm too against it, because again, I'm not entirely against the idea of that. It's, it's more about avoiding extremism. Yeah, Buddha was one of those philosophers. I actually really like the Buddha and a lot of his teachings. Um, I will say, though, that I'm really upset with most practice, practicing Buddhists. Because, well, not, not most present Buddhists, but most, like, Buddhist temples. Because one of the biggest things that the Buddha tried to teach people was, Hey, don't worship me as anything other than a human being who is trying to share, like, his idea on life. And then we made giant golden statues of him. What? No, that's... It's literally the exact opposite opposite it's it's defying his one request the only thing he wanted was for people to treat him like another person that was it we couldn't even do that why is this not working send this ah I think it's getting a little laggy. Oh, I see what's going on. It's because I'm using the wrong tool. Ah, well. Back to that. Not that. Uh. Yeah. Rip Gautama. I could talk all day about that, but long story short is just, um, I actually lost track of what I was saying, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, it's easy to do when you're multitasking. That's under box detail, not not mine. Ah, that will actually make that easier then. Uh, I still think that sins like greed, lust, gluttony are not inherently evil. Exactly. These things are not evil. Even wrath is not evil. It's just, um, I think that they're outdated. Uh, lust is just being horny. It's wrong to uh, sexualize people and think of them as sexual objects. That, I would say, is wrong. But just being, you know, horny isn't evil or wrong. And for many years, that is what was taught to everyone. That was just, that was the modus operandi. If you have impure thoughts, it is the devil, uh, blah, 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 blah. 
I just think that's messed up. That's a that's a bad thing to teach people. It's a bad thing to teach anyone. That their very natural thoughts are signs that they are bad people. And that they need to be punished for it. Uh. Same for gluttony, though it mostly aids in against one's overindulgence, aka eating yourself to death. Yeah, I suppose. Um, but then again, I don't know, it's just like... As long as there is the food to be gluttonous with, like, you're not... You're not, uh... You having that food is not taking the food away from others. I don't think it's not necessarily wrong to just enjoy it, you know? To eat for the sake of pleasure. So talk about greed, gluttony, wrath, pride, lust. Did I go over envy? I don't know if I went over envy. Plus, is a great survival strategy in the animal kingdom. A lot of sins are technically, but I think that ties into the good being against nature separating us from barbarians. Yeah. Envy is not inherently evil either. En envy is just someone else has something and I don't have it and I would like that thing. It becomes wrong when you, when you not only desire the thing, but desire to take it away from the other person. It, it becomes wrong when you think that you are more deserving of it than the other person because realistically I don't think deserving is even a thing we say deserving but uh, like like what does deserving mean that you are entitled to it no one is entitled to anything we all live on this earth as people who exist we're not we're not entitled to anything because we we have the one thing we are entitled to and that's life you're entitled to living to think that you are owed more that's when it becomes a problem i think but desiring more is not the same as thinking that you are owed something it's a entirely different level. So that's greed done. Did I talk about greed actually? I don't know if I talked about greed. Uh, okay. I'm going to talk about greed for a second. Greed is kind of like envy, honestly. It's just, I do think that greed might be the least uh, outdated I think that that might actually be the most this could be considered a sin. It's just the idea of a, you always need more. You don't always need more. Sometimes enough can be enough. And if you have more than those around you and you still say, I need more, I think that that, that becomes a problem. Because at that point, it's, you're, you know, I, I keep going on and on about that, but yeah. Uh, envy is defined as wanting what someone else has, while jealousy is being fearful of someone's taking what you have. Well, jealousy isn't even one of the sins, but um, I think jealousy, and actually I would say jealousy is just another word for envy. Like, uh, Oh, I'm going on a trip to Hawaii. Oh, I'm so jealous. It's... It's, uh... Two words. Two sides, same... Not even two sides, same coin. It's the same side of the same coin. Um... So, let's see. Greed, gluttony, wrath, envy, lust, pride. I'm missing one. Wrath, envy, greed, gluttony, pride... Lust. What what am I missing? Uh again again it's about excess such as when they act upon thoughts that may harm another person, which is why lust has its place for reasons I don't think I need to explain. Yeah, exactly. Um 
what, 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 what am I missing? I'm missing one. Because there's seven sins. Sloth! Oh my god, thank you so much. Ah. Uh. <laughs> sloth. I might need a moment just to think about Sloth. Because Sloth is an interesting one. What is Sloth? Why, why would it be considered a sin? You know... Is it, like, the avoidance of work? If that was the case, then I would say, the, like, it's not necessarily outdated. Because, like, uh, for example, slavery is exactly that. It's getting others to do work for you. Or is it just... Uh, is it... Taking time off at all, I guess. In which case, no, that's definitely wrong. Everyone needs a break from life, basically. Because our day-to-day -day is a lot. It can take a lot out of us. So, I, I'm unsure about Sloth. I can't say for certainty about that one. Entitlement. The delay is real, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah. Okay. We're just going to... Back to here. Get a lighter color. And start filling in... Maybe that, that might be a bit too big. Start filling in the box. And yeah, so in the original, sloth could be considered the concept of not doing religious activities. The sloth is considered the most difficult to define sin. Yeah, it is the most difficult to define. I will say, if it is literally just that specifically, not doing religious activities, then it is the least sinful. But I've never really seen it portrayed that way. So, it probably has... Unlike a lot of them, it probably has been updated. So it's, it, I'm not using the best words here, but it probably has, uh, it's probably the most up to date because it's been updated, unlike the other sins. But that said, I, I don't know, because I don't have the definition myself. Let's get some, like, colors that look like it could be meat chunks. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to put that there, because I need to re-get this and... Add two layers. So I can do this and make it really easy for myself. There we go. Love has also been defined as the failure to do things that one should do. Though the understanding of the sin in antiquity was that this laziness or lack of work was simply a symptom of the vice of apathy or indifference particularly in apathy or boredom with God. Huh. Because if you don't have God, you could never get anything done. Sorry, just, it's funny to me. The way, the amount of value that was put on religion is funny to me. Actually, you know what I need to do? I need to go here, fix that and finish up the inside of this there and we're just gonna keep this real simple because whatever here there Good enough for now. 
Uh, wait, what layer is that? Oh, it's on that layer. There we go. Says Google, our day today is also different from back when it was made. That is very true. I should probably get to this foot. Um, but yeah, I think most people can agree that we need to update our idea of sins. start merging these outlines, I think. Orin Oh, line. Here we go. Although, that doesn't include this part of the outline yet. do for the feet. It's a very generic outfit, but I think that's fine. I almost think I need to change this outline again. That. Uh, what? Oh, okay, I have two layers for that. And let's get back to pant color. Color. I gotta clean up some stuff. Hairy foot? Uh, yeah, I could give him a hairy foot. That doesn't sound too bad. Uh, here's the pants color. It took me a little bit longer than I would have liked to find that, but whatever. So you think I should just have it be like no shoe or sandal or anything, just his foot. In which case it would be not yet. Let me find the right layer. Ah, I don't I think I already merged that layer. So let's actually go down and make another new layer. In fact, it can kind of just be this one right here. <sighs> Feet are hard to draw. Try and keep it simplified like the hands. I 
feel like this is getting to be the point where I'm not going to be able to do much better just because of my current skill level and the resources at my disposal. But, whatever. If he did have shoes, he would, yeah, he would have half off. I was thinking that same thought earlier. Ah, what the hell? Uh, back? There we go. It's, uh, yeah, if he had to pay for shoes, they'd be, he'd get them half off. Not be big enough, but I think it's good enough for right now. That way I can keep this consistent. Ah, what the? Well, we're approaching three. I think that I will be ending the stream in about 13 minutes. We'll try and get as much done before then. Today was an interesting stream, I think. I'm gonna be reiterating this after the stream end, or when the stream ends, but uh, I'm gonna say it here as well. I just wanna say thank you for everyone who was able to make it live, and anyone who's watching this after the fact, obviously, but especially for those who are able to make it live. I have so much appreciation, you guys, and you do add so much. Uh, the more you interact, the the more engagement I get out of you guys, the better it is for the channel as a whole. But also just, I have, it's, uh, I never expect anyone to watch in the first place. So when people do, it's just mind boggling. And I'm so happy that I get to, how does he get around? I mean, people who are missing a foot can still get around. It's just, um, they just have a harder time of it. He probably has like a, I guess it'd be like a crutch. It wouldn't be like a, um, the crutch you would, it's not like a modern crutch, but he would, he probably has a crutch. I should add that. It's actually not a bad idea. Let's just have that lying like, Let's use this color, because that's our wood color. Just like a stick. The fact that this isn't I'm intentionally not making it very straight because it's just gonna be like a regular wooden stick. But uh, yeah, he probably has this thing. Is that about the right size? No, it actually had to be a little bit longer. Let's say to like here, maybe. And that, okay, let me actually measure this out. So if that's that, actually want it to be like that. Well, well, it's not that bad. It'd be like to here. And I don't like 
that last line. And that's too straight. Ah, there we go. He has a little crutch. I feel like, even though he, I, I feel, okay, sorry. Although I feel like he doesn't talk much, I feel like uh, when the, he has an audience, he gets very into telling them like uh, stories from his life. Especially with like a newer, like a, because I we I think we've already established that he and Leaf are working at the at a school of magic, kind of. So he probably I or may not even a school of magic, but a school that has magic. Um, so newer, younger students who come probably he has a lot of fun talking to them. Great, I can't wait to see his facial features in the next one. Yeah, that will unfortunately have to wait until next stream. Although I can spend this time at least. Uh, let's see. Let's keep it simple. Capacity at 50. Just so we have an idea of where his face is. Next time we'll be working on his facial structure, his hair. Might even rotate his head to be a little bit different. Uh, clean up his head shape. Maybe he works in the same villa as the educational facility that Leaf works in. Uh, this is me reading a comment, by the way. Uh, let me reread that. I just distracted myself. Uh, works in the same field as the educational facility. No, that's po that's possible. He might not work directly for the facility, but he like the facility, the organization <coughs> might not own. Hey, Mushu. Sorry, I got the bark barking. Cool. Uh, group, the organization might not be in charge of uh, the building in, in question. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna. There we go. He might actually work for the people who actually own the land. He might work for like the lord of the area. That's an interesting thought. Hmm. So if we're going by uh, medieval hierarchies, there'd be a lord who owns the land, and part of that land is the would be the organization that's teaching magic. But ultimately, the land belongs to the lord, and it's that lord's duty to hire the people to maintain it. Hmm. We'll also probably clean up the stick next time. Maybe work on making the hands better. Definitely fix up some of the proportions, I feel like. Especially this foot. This whole, like, leg area feels a little skinny. Uh, I feel like the foot needs to be rotated a little bit. But until then, um, yeah. This has been boring. Boulder Down. What a nice name. Boulder Down. Let me spend this last little bit of time cleaning up also this stuff. Color. Oh, actually. Thank you. 
color. And then let's move this down here. Yeah, merge that. Let me know if, if you're watching this after the fact, let me know your thoughts on the things I talked about today down in the comments. Uh, your thoughts on morality, your thoughts on legendary Pokemon, just everything. Uh, player below. And uh, let me know uh, whether or not you want to see Match the Gathering played on uh, Tabletop Simulator. Uh, one more time, I have so much appreciation for each and every single person who decides to watch my content in the first place. I have no expectation that for anyone to be here, so it makes that much more of a difference. And same goes for anyone watching this after the fact. I have no expectation for anyone to watch the VODs, so if you are, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do that. It means a lot to me. Um, base. And with that, I think we're done. So, I'll see you all next time. And, uh...